I am Kimberly Atkins. I am the senior Washington correspondent at WBUR, and I am based in Washington, D.C. So can you explain for people who may not understand why is it important for WBUR to have a reporter present in D.C.? Yeah, so I am the first Washington-based reporter for WBUR, and the idea was, although WBUR obviously has the benefit of all the great reporting that NPR reporters do uh, in D.C., many of whom are are my friends and I know, um, there are specific things that are Boston-focused, Massachusetts-focused, and New England-focused that it is good to have a pulse on. I would imagine that also be the maybe the point of being in D.C. is that you get uh, access to all of these people that you wouldn't normally otherwise get. Has that changed at all since the pandemic started? Yes and no. It has changed in the the venue, of course. Normally, my job would involve me spending a great deal of time on Capitol Hill, whether it's meeting with lawmakers in their offices to do interviews or going to press availabilities uh, that lawmakers will hold, or hearings that they hold, or Supreme Court arguments. So all that, none of that is happening. All that is gone right now. And they've been replaced by things like telephone calls, Zoom meetings. Lawmakers love Zoom, by the way. They love getting on and having these meetings. Uh, In the beginning, there was a lot of, you know, one lawmaker telling another that he or she was muted and you know, there was that. For the most part, I think, especially right now when uh, the response to the coronavirus is so important uh, and is such a focus of folks here, they've been very willing to make themselves available uh, electronically. And what just about every lawmaker has been doing a lot is having teletown halls, whether on Facebook or Zoom or some other form, which literally allows anybody who can get through with their call uh, or who can email in or, or tweet in their their uh, questions or comments to get in touch with lawmakers. So in one way, it's probably a lot easier for some constituents to have that direct line through the use of technology. I mean, there are a lot of calls where, that I'm on and so is, you know, Sharon from Swampskit. Um We have the same access to the, uh, the lawmaker. So at times it's a, a it's sort of democratizes the process. That access, which is so important, it's such an odd irony that that maybe there's more of it happening now. Do you see some of this sticking around when things uh, start to return to in-person venues? We'll have to see. I mean, I think one reason that it can happen now is that the lawmakers are in one place. They're in their right. homes, just like you and I are. Lawmakers are constantly on the go. The biggest challenge that we as reporters have is catching them. And a lot of times that's why I'm in the hallways, because there'll be a hearing and I know they'll be in that hearing and I can probably grab them as they're walking out of the hearing and and walk and talk and get my question into them before they go to a constituent meeting or or another sort of hearing or or meeting. Because you said the words walk and talk, I'm going to nerd out for a second and ask if the uh, depiction of the West Wing on the Aaron Sorkin TV show is anything like your experience in your walk and talks? Um, you know, it depends on the moment. One thing that I loved about the West Wing was the interaction between CJ and the reporters and you have staff really pushing back and, and trying to figure out what um, a story is going to be and, and get their interests across. That does happen a lot. A lot has been made about how Elizabeth Warren, prior to her presidential run, was um, re- never spoke to the press at all. And one of the fun activities would be uh, seeing all the ways that members of her staff would, you know, either jump in between uh, myself and the senator or, you know, give her a chance to run. She's really fast, too. She can run and, like, hop in an elevator so fast. Elizabeth Warren is is speedy. Yeah, but, well, I you imagine know. you can't necessarily have people just jumping into your Zoom calls either to save you, no. so... <laughs> I cannot. Have you had um, that experience of seeing like <laughs> politicians' homes and, and people on Capitol yes. Hill you see every day and you're like, oh my God, that's where you live? That's crazy. I wouldn't imagine it looks like that. 
It's very true. You have uh, different people have different looks. Elizabeth Warren likes to use her sunroom uh, at her home in Cambridge. If you've seen an online forum with her, you usually see that. Uh, On the flip side, you have someone like uh, Congressman David Cicilline of Rhode Island has a very, uh, very formal looking space in his home. There's an American flag and it, you know, it looks very much like a congressional office when he does his video appearances. So everybody has their different style. Are you asking anybody if they're just professional from the waist up? <laughs> I've not <laughs> asked that question yet. Fair enough. Fair I enough. I wonder it. I just, I just wonder. Yeah, we'll just keep that, <laughs> keep that to ourselves. Politicians are obviously playing a critical role in planning, in policy, and just in leadership in general. And it's clear that things can still remain partisan, even in a crisis of this magnitude. But is there anything that you're seeing in D.C. that is giving you some hope? that people will be able to continue to work together in some way beyond just this this first um, stimulus bill? Yeah, you know, I think it's pretty clear that for the most part, although a lot of partisan battles can feel very ugly and very uh, personal and nasty, um, and I know the American public often doesn't have a lot of faith in its leaders at times, particularly here in Washington, D.C., One thing that I have seen from uh, just about everyone that I cover and everyone who I see, particularly on Capitol Hill, uh, is a genuine desire to get through this epidemic to, to ensure that the United States and its people make it through as best as possible. I think that it is the job of journalists like me to fairly report what are uh, what elected leaders are doing and saying and non-elected what all leaders are doing and saying and putting it into context i think that's my job uh every day and i take that very seriously because that's uh the information that the public relies on to make their determinations uh of how uh leaders are performing and i think the rest is up to the public. Kimberly, thank you so much for your work and thank you for your time. For anybody who is watching, you can stay informed with all of WBUR's coronavirus coverage at wbur.org slash coronavirus. Please sign up for Kimberly's newsletter, Boston to the Beltway. You can sign up for that at wbur.org slash newsletters and always tune into 90.9 FM. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you.